Hey guys, so today I'm in Stevens Institute of Technology. We are sitting on campus and we want to give you a real close and personal view of how it is studying in US, living in New York, especially if you're a girl. So I have with me Vandita here. Hi guys, I am uh, Vandita Manohar. So basically I'm doing my master's here in business intelligence and analytics. And uh, yeah, I study in Stevens Institute of Technology. As you can see, uh, the one thing that we have the best is the view. So we're utilizing this and I'm excited to have this conversation with Sachi because I mean, like everybody would want to know how life here in New York and New Jersey is. So yeah, let's get candid. So I'm going to ask her questions and I know a lot of you DM us, ask us these questions. So, really hope that this video gives you an authentic view right. of how it is to do all of this on your own. So, keep on watching. So, Vandita, first thing, why New York? Like, was it always a dream or just happened? No, it was always a dream because I started watching Gossip Girl very young in my life and I'm not even kidding. While watching it, I was so inspired because I mean, I always thought that New Yorkers have a very quick and fast life and they're just so happy. Everybody's just in their own world and working and all of that. And obviously, the city is a different vibe altogether. It does not feel like uh, you're somewhere in the same world. So. Watching all of that online, I was very inspired. I knew for a fact I had to come here by hook or by crook, and that too like before I turned 25. So this okay. was, you know, this was there, and every day like I didn't know how it happened, but it kind of like happened pretty quick. Stevens, I applied to so many colleges, but Stevens I got an admit, and I just knew like this is where I'm gonna be. So yeah, New York it is, and can't be happier. So in a nutshell, if you have to describe your experience mm -hmm. of one year. Um, Do you feel like you're in a movie? I did initially. <laughs> <laughs> Not lying, yeah. Initially, I did. As soon as I came here, it was it was fun because everything was so different. Back in India, things are so different. Over here, things are like completely different. There is no judgment. There is like everybody is just doing their own thing, and you might be walking around with a big phone or a big tripod. Nobody and cares. Nobody cares. Nobody even turns and looks at you and gives you the weird look. So that's the best part, and that was for me. A very big thing. It's liberating, right? Yeah, it is like you know the kind of freedom that you experience, and um, once you like live in live into it, and then later it just fades off. Like slowly, slowly, life hits you hard, and you get into work and homeworks, and you don't really get the time that you really need. So yeah, it felt like a movie initially, but now it's more like a responsibility. If I need to keep living here, I need to like work really hard. So it's now pretty hard. Okay. So, uh, by the way, she has her YouTube channel in which she shares more videos on life in the US, so yeah. go check that out. I'm going to leave the link for that in the description box as well. Uh, one of the videos in your channel is about the journey, right? The flight, the flight that you yeah. took. How does one prepare for that phase where uh, most of uh, the people watching this would have lived in their house, yeah. just like you, you know, the rest <laughs> till now, and then suddenly now you're going to move countries and uh, yeah. like pretty much be responsible for yourself. So. How did you prepare for that? So, phase? honestly, didn't prepare because okay. I didn't really, you know, it happened so quick. Everything happened so quick, and I came here during the pandemic, like during the last phases of the pandemic. So I didn't really know what to do and how to do. Uh, at home, everything you know was so easy for me. I was pampered. I came here. The whole journey felt like nothing. Okay. Um, Just you know, numb. I was just numb because yeah. I, it took me so much time to actually understand that okay this is my life now um, when I left it felt like okay I'm going on a vacation I did cry somewhere around it at the airport things did hit me when I saw all my friends my family standing outside and I didn't know when I'd see them next so that uncertainty that you have that hit me after coming here it just felt like you know it felt surreal like I made it that that was my first thought but eventually it hit like you know homesickness okay. doesn't hit quick for some people it does probably but for me it took its own sweet time when all the you know excitement faded away that's when I was like shit I need to know categorize my days according to ha today I'm washing vessels or this time I'm washing vessels today is my laundry day so I need to like keep time for all of this I need to vacuum the house I need to like it's too overwhelming at a point so I was like no and you need to like live with different people from different places and you know not everybody can do it so you didn't prepare right no. like you said but 
uh, if somebody wants to sort of they they have the time mm-hmm. and you know they want a little bit more structure to this process right. what are the three things you recommend doing before you get on that flight the first thing i would say is learn to genuinely be independent when it um, not just you know while doing your chores and stuff like that but mentally uh you cannot one thing i've learned here is you cannot be emotionally dependent on anybody okay emotionally independent like what does that mean like you can't uh, constantly wait for somebody to be there for you to okay. there's no shoulder to cry on all the time okay sometimes you're going to have to sit at home mm-hmm. cry tap yourself on the back saying listen you need to do this so get up and pick go yourself up you need to pick yourself up and that is the biggest lesson that i have learned after coming here so if there's one thing like anything and everything nothing can prepare you honestly to come here but if there's one thing that you can start doing is learning how to like genuinely do things for yourself and okay. be on your own uh, financially also like try to make good decisions because i mean uh, right here nobody is going to tell you what time to come back home nobody is here to look out for you right. you have to look out for yourself and you need to be really careful when you're out so be self aware have your own things to do in your own time and don't just be academically oriented you know just have some passion that you follow because on days that you feel so bad those you know those little things that you do probably painting or just i make videos so for me that kept me going okay so be independent have a yeah. hobby to keep yourself occupied yeah. and a uh, financial you need okay. to learn how to be learn financially how good. to manage your finances yes yeah. as a girl here in new york so mm-hmm. i call her the girl in new york the girl. <laughs> <laughs> so as a girl here in new york uh-huh. uh, can you share like three learnings or three insights something you wish somebody had sat you down and told you okay hey listen you need to know these three things so um this as a girl specifically i mean this applies to guys as well but um girls are very gullible in most cases so i was told that whenever you're clubbing or going out or wherever it is you may not necessarily need to drink but if somebody is offering you anything even a glass of water if it comes to your table do not touch it okay do not take it and um do not be too friendly with people okay you need to know where to like draw that line mm-hmm. and that is very important like having boundaries especially when you're here and alone and in new york is okay. very important and again being self aware like just knowing how and where things are and what is happening around you with your people is as important as uh, being you know like very uh, independent when you, it's like you can fight for yourself yeah but do not even put yourself in that situation just okay. learn to pick up signs So have you had any safety concerns did you feel unsafe at any point of time uh, being in this city yeah. not really but there was this one incident it was pretty like uh, i came here in august so i think september mid i did have this so i was in a park that is very close to my house at 2 3 in the morning the neighborhood oh that i live in is pretty fine like 2 3 a 2 3 am in the what morning what were you doing so i had an assignment to submit <laughs> after this whole mental breakdown <laughs> i was like i need a break so i walked out and it it is pretty safe it's not bad and the park is like literally 5 minutes from my house so i went and you get the you get the view and okay that's like the best thing so i was just sitting there and uh, you know you get these uh, i heard about this but i'm not really sure how true it is but you get these hooting calls and that's how like different gangs talk okay so i wasn't aware of it and um, i did get to hear quite a lot that day so that was one incident and the second thing is similar when i was in that same park going back home there was this one guy who kept following okay so it like here is where my instincts kicked in i didn't know if he was just going his way or if he was following me so at that point of time i did try to take a right and then i did take a left and then i realized that he is following me okay so when i got closer to my house um i should have actually dialed numbers but i just didn't have the time to so as soon as i got closer to the house i started sprinting mm. and the minute i started sprinting he actually ran so that's when i was like okay like he was actually following so yeah. i ran in and i just opened the door and i shut it and that guy waited there like i could see right so that guy waited there for almost 10 15 minutes even before he left that place mm-hmm. and i don't know if he was in a senses it didn't look like he was but it was like that one incident um was so scary that i stopped going out and at that point of, like literally <laughs> I just didn't know how to process it yeah, so for like yeah. the whole week I was just like so scared, scared to even yeah. step out but I didn't tell this to anyone because I didn't want to like put them through that yeah. whole thing so that whole week I thought maybe he's going to come back maybe today he'll come back fortunately he hasn't so okay 
would say basically you need to be on your guard and yeah, you take need care to, of the time zone. You need to act very quick. You can't be like, oh, maybe, maybe, no. There is no maybe here. There is yes or no. So figure out if you think your sixth sense tells you so much and that's what I, I learned that here. If you feel that something is not okay and you're uncomfortable in any which way, there is no compromise. Just get up and leave. Okay. One thing about Vandita is she's very organized. Uh, oh, yeah. She has her routines. She has a fitness routine. If you follow her on Insta, you'll see all of that. She, I think, has a study yeah. routine. She it's has been a journey. Her self-care <laughs> routine. Uh, so, and I think this is where a lot of people struggle to oh, yeah. be like organized, right? Tell us about a day in your life. What are these routines, mm-hmm. and what do they do for you? Like? So, um, I think last year when I came here, there was obviously a lot of emotions in me. So, my routine, my whole schedule was all over the place. Like, if you let your mental health get bad here. Um, you can't you can't function you can't do basic life mm-hmm. stuff and i lost my routine my schedules my room looked like i'm living out of some trash like, literally yeah. like it's it was a dump yard mm-hmm. all my clothes everything and you cannot work in a cluttered right. space like your head just can't because you are managing so many things right you yeah. have your chores you have your assignments you have your classes and the thing is i shifted from electrical to data science so that was again very I'm still not like my confidence is still like building up to an extent where I can apply for jobs but it, it was hard and internship search and life in general here got very hard for me so after going and I, I got this reset in my life and that's when I understood I came back and I came back with a routine so now a regular day in my life is I wake up um, around 7 okay. 7 7 30 max and once I'm awake regardless of what I have to do or no I'm just awake so I have um, my breakfast. first meal. Yeah, okay. so not exactly breakfast, but I you have like a, yeah, okay. I have a big glass of milk with you know it's it's a malt mix my mom made. Mm-hmm. It's very healthy. So I have that. I have an egg and some nuts. Mm-hmm. So that's my first part of it. Then you know I shower and freshen up and everything. After that I make proper breakfast. So it's usually Indian breakfast at that point of time or okay. just granola and stuff like that. Then if I have work, I sit and finish everything up and by I think 1.30. So when I'm making my breakfast, I prep for lunch. Mm. So simultaneously, you're not spending too much time right. in the kitchen right. then. So right. you prep all all the boys watching this need to learn, learn. Some basic cooking. <laughs> so oh don't yeah. come here if you don't know basic cooking, basic button washing, you all that. Know. And also what she's saying, right? Learn to sort of organize your day. Your cooking part in one, one, one day, shot. Yeah. Don't plan cooking three yeah. times a day. It helped me so much. Like if I stand in the kitchen, maybe 45 minutes max, my breakfast is ready, my lunch is ready, and the same thing I eat for dinner. Right. So I spend just 45 minutes to one hour in the whole day being in the kitchen. So, so you're eating healthy and also saving a lot of money. Yeah, because saving money, saving time, yeah, yeah. and you just have food at home, so you're not sleeping hungry. <laughs> and when your assignments and everything get too hectic, you can pause and you can just go grab a meal and come back and do it. Yeah. Sometimes people finish doing it and then start cooking. So people start cooking at 9, 10 in the night. And then obviously the whole routine after that is messed up. Correct. That can't work. So I have my lunch around 1.32. I have a snack now at okay. around 4. Then I go to the gym. Uh, or I attend classes and then I go to the gym at night. In okay. At around 9 o'clock in the night. Finish everything. I go back home. So usually my assignments are submitted at 12. So whatever last minute stuff I need to do, I do it. And that's it. I submit that by around 12.31. You are sleeping. I, I'm sleeping. I talk to everybody. So when I'm doing all of this, if I'm cooking, I call up people from India. Right. So I have entertainment. So I'm talking to them and I'm cooking. So it doesn't feel like a task on a right. wall. You, if you manage your time this way, then you don't feel it's hectic. But if you don't manage, I've been on both sides. Right. So I haven't managed them before. And even like tiny, tiny things were hard. Now I can do five different things in a day and okay. not be tired. So it comes with a little bit of trial and error because it yeah. might look different for you, right? Might look different for every person. It does. You don't have to necessarily wake up at seven. Right. Maybe you can wake up at twelve and still do it. But yeah, like whatever works for them. It's but do have like a basic yeah. study, cooking, self care. Categorize your, you know, day. Right. So a lot of people, a lot of students, I think, do feel like you mentioned mm-hmm. loneliness at some point of time, right? Because you're just. It's such a different setting, yeah. right? From being surrounded by so many people, suddenly like right. being alone most of your time. So, what kind of support system have you built here for yourself? Um, so yeah. you said that you should be independent, but yes, you need, yeah. But you also need, I think, you people need. around you, right? So, 
Who are these people? Where are they? And how have you gone about doing that? So basically, when I first came in, I wasn't in the right sort of um, company. I would say. I mean, I'm not talking about the people. The people. It's not about the people. It's sometimes the connection yeah, course, that you the have with them and your it, interest. Yeah, it just is not. It just like, doesn't go well. Right, right. So no, like hard, you know, feelings for anyone. I slowly disconnected myself. Then I got right now. I am more with uh, people who come from my hometown. Okay. So I mean, somewhere around it, you connect. Hmm. That's what I've been seeing here also. So if like I'm from Mumbai, for example, if I connect with people from Mumbai, you have a lot of things in common. Okay. And that way you connect on a deeper level. Hmm. So initially, I was always. So they with are other your people. roommates. Are they your batchmates? Who no, are they're not my roommates. They are okay. actually my. batchmates and okay. some of them are my seniors as well okay so and i did meet quite a lot of people in the indian association okay so you're also part of the indian association yeah i'm also part of the indian association okay. so i mean right now i have like three four people that i can count on and the rest is all back in india so okay. even if it's a call away i still take the time to call them and okay. talk to them okay great so talking about support system and who meets mm-hmm. right uh one i think first step is getting the admit in reaching here yeah the next big step is finding accommodation and most indian students prefer to stay off campus oh, right yeah. because it just makes more sense it's cheaper yeah. yeah so now you have to find a house mm-hmm. you have to live with people uh which i know can get dicey Very sometimes oh, yeah. right so and i think you also went through a lot a in, lot yeah. of back and forth here so uh, any advice on this how to do it right so uh, i mean um, i keep telling this to everybody you just need to learn the art of coexisting you and i've mentioned it on my channel a couple of times as well because you can't necessarily be friends with everybody who's in your life but that doesn't mean you're going to be a hard person to live with you will have differences but how you deal with it is the whole you know that's what defines how your situation at home is going to be so again i've been on both sides and i just learned you know the art of just coexisting with them so now i could say i'm a good roommate or maybe i mean i'm a roommate <laughs> i don't give them any trouble You're from my end you know roommate who doesn't trouble other people i don't trouble like <laughs> and that's I, good i enough. hope so <laughs> reach that yeah yeah i i don't i don't throw any tantrums at them neither do they so we have this understanding and we've been very open about it like maybe we can't be friends and it's okay like as long yeah. as i am not in your way or not in my be, way you need to have a peaceful setting at home and yeah you just should feel comfortable living yeah just be comfortable That's more important and you can't depend on your roommates like regardless of who is with you or no you need to be comfortable in your own space so for me it's like people who share a room again like you have to be in very good terms with the person you're living with in that room but since i got a private space for me it really doesn't matter the only common space that i share is the bathroom and the kitchen so whenever they are there if they are there i talk to them so it's not like it's toxic or something in the house it's just that it's a little mellow it's so neutral neither it's neutral yeah it's not toxic so it's, it's just there right. yeah so if you can't get along it's okay yeah. i mean it's not a big deal I mean, this is something which. So I was also a student long, long back, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I too had a roommate. So I remember living two years with one person mm-hmm. uh, in like a room. And uh, I think the mistake which I made back then was thinking that okay, she's going to become my best, best friend, friend, and you know we're going to be like we're going to explore this entire college life together. I did the same thing together. too. And that got real pretty quick because it's not necessary, right? You don't have. So yeah. I think that's the learning I had. accepting that okay she she's going to be there she's going to help me or we going to help each other, each other yeah. and we we'll, like live peacefully but that's it it's not going to be like yeah. oh she's going to be my best friend <laughs> and in fact i don't think i i mean touch, touch with, her with today her. so yeah. i mean if you do become friends great great but yeah don't expect so vanita thank you so much i think this is a very different video from what you normally see on my channel but Uh, a little bit behind the scenes you know because we are usually encouraging yeah. you guys to come to us but at the same time we also want you to be aware of the sector and the part of the coin yes <laughs> and yeah i mean having gone through this journey some time in my life as well what i can tell you is do try to enjoy the little things every yeah. day like like she i think the view her, the view so whatever whatever works for you Yeah, do have a good time. Be nice to people, people around yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> do check out her channel. Uh, there are more videos. Basically, right? I cover life here, and mostly um, I don't just share things for the sake of it, but I share my experiences. I link it with my experiences, so people have like you know a personal touch to what I'm saying. So yeah, that's what I do on my channel right. and Instagram. As well. And if you want to ask her questions about Stevens, about just generally moving to US, do reach out. 
don't be creepy be like that. <laughs> yeah. i know how it can get sometimes oh yeah so yes yeah, so i'm going to leave the link for her linkedin and instagram email also yeah email uh, in the description box so do check it out this video is actually a two part video so it's part 1 and part 2 you can check out on anandita's channel and it's i'll leave the link for that as well so basically we're going to cover about um, our general visa questions that you guys have yeah. asked so many times so we're going to get such to answer all of that so yeah i hope that might help you guys all right thank you bye